Today, I have two players who are undervalued by the Dynasty community compared to other premium Dynasty assets, despite similar age and similar production. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to show you stats of two players who are very similar in terms of their age and their production profile over the past couple of years. One of them is valued as a premium in Dynasty, and the other one is the discounted or generic version of that same player. So first up, we have a wide receiver comparison and premium player number one will be 23 years old in April. And so far in his two year career, he's averaging per season, 115 targets, 77 receptions, 1,020 yards, five and a half touchdowns, 14 fantasy points per game. And over the last two years, he has 12 wide receiver two weeks and five wide receiver one weeks and is finished as a top 24 wide receiver in both years as the wide receiver 24 and wide receiver 20. The generic player just turned 23 on January 18th and in his two year career, he is averaging per season 109 targets, 71 receptions, 1000 yards, six touchdowns, 13.9 fantasy points per game and has accumulated 13 wide receiver two weeks and six wide receiver one weeks and has finished as a top 30 wide receiver both years as wide receiver 28 and wide receiver 25. To further feed the comparison, both young wide receivers are in great offenses. They're tied to fantastic young quarterbacks and could be considered the wide receiver one or two on their own team. And if you haven't guessed it yet, the premium wide receiver is Cowboys wide receiver C.D. Lamb, currently valued as the Dynasty wide receiver three. And the generic wide receiver is Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins, currently valued as the Dynasty wide receiver 11, taking two rounds after Lamb. So why is there such a discrepancy between these two players, despite both being the same exact age and having basically the same exact production over the last two years? Well, I think number one, Lamb was and still is considered the better wide receiver. I mean, he was the better prospect coming out of college in their same draft classes. He got better draft capital going to the Cowboys in the first round compared to T. Higgins going to the Bengals in the second and is viewed as having a clear path to being his team's alpha wide receiver and beating out Amari Cooper. And that is not the case for T. Higgins, especially whenever you consider the fact that they drafted Jamar Chase at the 1.05 in this past year's draft. And for all intents and purposes, Jamar Chase is exactly as advertised and is the Bengals alpha wide receiver now relegating T Higgins to being a very good wide receiver two, or at least the wide receiver one B to Jamar Chase's one A. However, the fact of the matter is that through two seasons in their very short careers, both players have produced very similarly given very similar situations. We want Lamb to be that alpha wide receiver. We want a 150 target season, a DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones level type of season from CeeDee Lamb. That's what we want, but we have yet to get that. And honestly, we have really yet to be shown that anything is going to change over the next couple of years with Amari Cooper still being under contract. Michael Gallup may or may not be re-signed, but Cedric Wilson has basically been the same type of wide receiver for the Cowboys over the last half of the year. And so Lamb can't do it on 120 targets in a season, especially whenever Dak Prescott, even for as much as he throws, he still spreads the ball around. I mean, he has Amari Cooper to throw to. Dalton Schultz saw over 100 targets himself. Both of the running backs each combined for over 100 targets. And then the combo of Michael Gallup and Cedric Wilson also combined for over 120 targets themselves. And while Lamb has those explosive like nine for 150 in two type weeks, those amazing stat lines that can win you a week in fantasy, Lamb can also be straight eliminated from games exactly like what we saw over the final four weeks of 2021, where in four games, he totaled 15 receptions for 212 yards and zero touchdowns. That was over a four game span. That wasn't one or two games, four games. And that was during the fantasy playoffs too. Like that killed your fantasy football team if you were trying to make a playoff run and a championship run in 2021. Meanwhile, T Higgins basically is in the same boat. He's fighting for targets with Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, CJ Uzuma and Joe Mixon also combined for over 110 targets on a team that is already throwing lower than expected and at least uh, at least on average or lower than average with only throwing 555 times over a 17 game season. 
And Higgins is no different himself in terms of having high explosive weeks, like that monstrous 12 for 194 in two performance that we saw in the semifinals in week 16 this year that probably vaulted a lot of teams to the championship just by himself. But he can also put up some dud weeks as well, like what we saw multiple times in 2021, like in week 15, he had two receptions for 23 yards, championship week, week 17, three for 62, while Jamar Chase was the one going off. Both of these wide receivers have shown that they can be just as capable winning you a week as they are killing you a week. And I think what really that this shows is that we were way too quick to crown CeeDee Lamb as the next great dynasty wide receiver, and we we're too quick to move him up to dynasty wide receiver three in our rankings. But on the flip side, we were too harsh on T Higgins for the addition of Jamar Chase, because over two years, both of these guys are producing at the same level each and every week. And on a season based level, they're both the same age. So take advantage of the price difference between Lamb and T Higgins and go out and get yourself some T Higgins. Next up, we have a running back comparison. So premium player number two here, is 24 years old in June, and over the last two seasons, he is averaging 214 carries, 48 targets, 39 receptions, 1,180 total yards, 10.5 total touchdowns, and 14.7 fantasy points per game, and he has also totaled 18 RB2 weeks and 11 RB1 weeks, and has finished as a top 15 running back both years as RB14 and RB8. Meanwhile, generic player number two, will be 24 years old in February, and over the last two seasons himself, he is averaging 245 carries, 55 targets, 44 receptions, 1,260 total yards, 10 and a half total touchdowns, 15 and a half fantasy points per game, and has accumulated 23 RB2 weeks and nine RB1 weeks, while finishing each of the last two years as an RB1, as the RB8 and RB11. Again, to add more information, both of these running backs are on mediocre to subpar teams. Both of them also have a more pass catching specialist behind them that steals receiving work from them. And even though both are the same age, the generic player has actually been in the league for one more year than our premium player. And again, if you haven't guessed it yet, our premium player is Antonio Gibson, currently valued as the Dynasty RB13, and our generic back is Raiders running back Josh Jacobs, currently valued as the RB22, taking two and a half rounds after Antonio Gibson. So where is the discrepancy here? Well, again, Antonio Gibson is the better athlete. He has the freakier size, speed, athletic profile combo, and the player that all off season we were waiting to be unlocked as the next Christian McCaffrey in this Ron Rivera Washington offense. And again, a guy that we were just too quick to crown as the next great dynasty running back as the next Christian McCaffrey, which led to a semi-disappointing 2021 fantasy season. Jacobs, on the other hand, is a former first round pick, so he has way better draft capital than third round pick Antonio Gibson, but he's been cast aside by the dynasty community and myself included, I won't not include myself there, I've hated Josh Jacobs over the past two years and have said so violently on this channel, but he's been cast aside and that is despite being really good in the NFL with two straight 1000 yard rushing seasons to start his career in 2019 and 2020, and then now back to back RB1 seasons for fantasy in 2020 and 2021. He's produced better already in his young career than Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He's produced similarly, if not better over the past two years than other dynasty running backs like Ezekiel Elliott and Nick Chubb, yet he's valued way below all three of those guys in dynasty. Why? And while he doesn't have the same ceiling as a lot of other running backs in dynasty, especially Antonio Gibson, as shown by his nine RB1 weeks over the past two years, he has still performed as an RB2 or better in 23 games, and that production is okay, actually more than okay, at RB22 prices in Dynasty, especially for what he did in 2021, where only two of his 15 games came outside the top 20 among all running backs. Only two, two games all year was he outside the top 22 among running backs. That's consistency, that's stability, that's valuable at RB22 that you're not getting at RB13 in Antonio Gibson. And don't get me wrong, Gibson has the ceiling, he has the upside and potential, but when does that happen? I mean, Washington hasn't seen a 10-win season since 2012, before that 2005, 
Is JD McKissick back in 2022? If he is, why would things change in terms of him getting the receptions and the targets and not Antonio Gibson under Ron Rivera? If McKissick is not there, I am all in. I like him if McKissick is not there and is not re-signed in 2022, a la what we saw from Joe Mixon without Gio Bernard this past week. But until that happens, RB12 is just too rich for my blood when I can get similar production from Josh Jacobs at a near three round discount. And if you've made it to this point in the video, I would invite you guys to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet, because I would like to remind you, we are running a subscription through the end of January to give away a year's worth of DLF premium subscription to 10 random subscribers. So if you want a chance to get in on that, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button and you will be automatically entered to get a chance to get that premium subscription. And with that all being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch y'all later.